Everybody, it's Tyler here at WVROX, checking team number 48, Team Elite, a team that uh, I've definitely had my eye on for a really long time. It, it brings me back to when I was a team. We've partnered with them for many years. Uh, and 48 Elite has a really cool robot this year. Uh, we're going to actually take a deeper dive into more specific mechanisms instead of just having uh, a full overview on here because there's some things that they're super proud of. Uh, talking about uh, the gearbox we'll talk about, their turret, some programming as well, too. And to help me speak more about this, by the way, I have uh, Ian, Aiden, and Ren and 48 building great robots every year. Can't wait to tell you more about some specific areas coming up here on Behind the Bumpers. This video on First Updates Now is made possible by viewers like you and also the following sponsors. If you want to continue enjoying the excitement of robotics, come check out what's going on at Kettering University, including their Combat BattleBots team and First Center. Turn your robotics experience into a professional career. Be sure to apply to Kettering beginning in August of 2022. Go to kettering.edu apply to learn more. If you are a college student or recent graduate looking for an incredible internship, take a look at Stryker. Stryker provides a housing stipend, great pay, and an opportunity to work with state-of-the-art medical technology equipment. Discover why so many FIRST alumni are coming to Stryker for their internship or career at careers.stryker.com. So let's start out uh, on your robot uh, with your gearbox here. One of the things you're telling me ahead of time is that uh, you have a super quick change gearbox. Uh, so let's talk to me a little bit more about it, how it's worked out for you and why you designed it that way. All right, so in our past, we've always had trouble with the drive shaft breaking. Um, so we wanted to make it replaceable super easily so we can get that done. Um, it'll only take about 10 to 15 minutes to get it changed earlier. Um, like two years ago, it'll only take about an hour or maybe two if we had trouble. But um, since we have three Neos in our gearbox, it's very powerful. So if we go back and forth a lot, the drive shaft's going to twist right off and just break. Um, so it's, it can be taken out. A uh, new one can be put in, the replaced one, in about 10 to 15 minutes. I got to ask you on 48. Uh I always think of 48 having super powerful drive trains. Like you guys have a, a, kind of that great mix of good offense and really great defense right. as well. So can push why anyone. has that been so important to your team over the years? Um, we want to be able to push people across the field because we want to be um, efficient. We want to be able to do whatever's going to help the team. And then is this gearbox on here, is this something that's like new to this year or have you had this quick change in previous years too? Um, the quick change is new to this year. Sure. Yeah. Um, so I love that on here, uh, having once again that three kneel, being able to do it quick, super important to the teams uh, as well too. Now, like I said, we're not going to do a full robot overview here. We're going to cover some really specific areas on your robot. So let's hand it over to Aiden, uh, who's going to talk more about uh, your uh, turret and some really cool 3D printing that's going on in this. I love that. We're starting to see that more and more with teams as well. So talk to me about uh, what's unique with your robot and why it's so important to your team to have it. All right. So first off, we started with uh, these herringbone gearings, these onyx material herringbone gears. Uh, they're really smooth. We found out that we haven't replaced these once this entire year. They've been very sturdy. We found out that the hair and bone texture actually makes it more durable and gives it more surface area for better turning and better grip. And so it stays together. And we did the same thing. Since, since we saw the strength on the turret for so long, we decided to use it on our climbing gear boxes too. Our climbing gear boxes, there's two in there. There's two and they mesh together and there's also seven pins on the inside which is used for our locking mechanism. We've only had one problem and it took a lot of force. It took us getting knocked off of the actual climber for those to actually need replacing. Oh, wow. So we, we've had no problems with these. It's been great all year. You can see there's kind of some tear from us getting knocked off. These are the ones that we had on before. But these have been great for us. We, we suggest any team use them and we used them specifically another reason was saving weight we used to be the heaviest robot out there biggest robot we like to push people around that's our big history but with these uh we're stayed we stayed underway all this year because of all the things we 3d printed this year how much weight do you think you are saving by doing that we're probably saving about like probably five to six pounds on doing uh 3d printing uh, uh and on all the stuff that we use and talking about uh from your your hood area where that ball path is uh right here how is that when you were like testing like materials for that ball to interact with like what made you decide like hey this is still a good path to go to uh first we tried foam instead of instead of this actual like uh 3d printed stuff uh we thought we could get enough compression on it but there's actually too much compression with the foam so we got it the thickness right and basically we like a smooth trajectory so this is actually a new addition the hood 
uh, it wasn't like this originally. We didn't have this back motor sure. to actually counteract the front spin that we, uh, we used to have. Because we used to have the problem where we'd shoot it out and it'd bounce right back out, basically. So we, uh, I think our third regional, we added this, this top part and we added this back plate and it made it really smooth transition and we get these nice little like almost knuckle balls that shoot off into the hole. It's interesting you said because I was at Finger Lakes Regional uh, where you're competing. That definitely, I think, was a big issue with your team is you're getting a lot of just bounce outs for things. And I just watched your, uh, as recording this, you just played your first match and you can tell that improvement as well too yeah. has really been working out well for you guys. So mm -hmm. I'm glad to hear that has worked out uh, so well for your team. Anywhere else that's uh, 3D printer, anywhere else you want to highlight? Uh, no, not, not that I could think of. Most of the main thing to gearboxes, we actually brought our 3D printer here today. Sure. We're actually 3D printing parts for some other teams what, what right are you, now. I say, what are you printing right uh, now there? We're printing like two little clips for uh, the team next to us, the the Titanium Titans, and they're uh, the little clips that go onto these Lex, uh, Lexan plates that they hook onto the robots. So. Uh, it's funny just watching that on the Mark Forge. It's, uh, it's crazy how quick that still goes with that type yes. of material. Like, I would think it's something you have to print it like, you know, 20, 20 millimeters or something like that. That looks way quicker than that. Yes, so. it is very quick. Oh, these two are also 3D printed. These are our clamps for our hooks. Sure. So these are our carbon fiber rod with the Onyx material on it, and we kind of, like, tighten these down. We haven't had any slippage or problems with these. These are on both both ends over here and these have been really really secure for us to hang off of these are our passive hooks because initially we didn't have passive hooks and it was kind of harder for us to traverse or get to the higher bars so Ren let's start to wrap up uh, on your robot here to talk about some uh, tracking and limelight and some of the programming that's gone into it uh, I really love to hear just like how your tracking works and then uh, any maybe modifications you've had to make or tweaking you've had to do uh, over the season as well yeah of course so as initially stated we didn't have this hood at first um, adding this has been really important. So when we first added in this hood, we also added in the limelight, which has our distance tracking. This allowed us to shoot from basically anywhere on the field. And even if we can't see our robot and where it's placed, it'll still be in the right spot 100% of the time. Um, this wheel also is uh, at a perfect ratio to this wheel. So that way it adds like a perfect amount of backspin, yeah. almost knuckleballs it in. Um, bounce outs have been almost non-existent ever since we've added this. I, oh. I noticed in your match, too, that you were shooting, uh, your trajectory is actually pretty low as well. Like, it was almost just barely eclipsing uh, the hub, too. Yeah, um, we did that also just to make sure that, because um, even if it were to bounce out, it would just hit the other rim. Yeah. Basically, um, it did take a lot of time. We had to basically track foot by foot going back uh, the RPM it would need. But ever since we've gotten that, it's been perfect. Um, our shot accuracy has increased from 50 to almost 90. Um, and also with our turret, it allows us a 90 to 90 view. So like I said, we can't see our robot where it's positioned on the field. Um, it'll track it no matter what. So even if we're off by a little bit, it'll do that. And especially for our autonomous, um, there are times where we don't place the robot in the exact right spot. And before where that was, you were missing a whole a lot of points because of that. Um, that is no longer an issue because um, our limelight will track it through that. So no matter what, um, our shots are almost always on point. Uh, I do have to ask you before we wrap up on here, uh, what is the meaning of yurt yurt that is on your uh, limelight? Um, that is something one of our mentors enjoys to say. Which and, one? Call him out. Uh, Alex Richards. All right. Uh, he, it's a fun saying, I guess, and we've tried to get him to take it off multiple times. <laughs> and it, Keep showing back up. Uh, so sounds like a boom, up. sounds like a boomer mentor to me. So, well, uh, absolutely. <laughs> well, 48. Uh, thanks for showing off some really cool specific features of your robot, and we appreciate you taking time. Of course, good luck here at uh, WVROX, uh, and uh, can't wait to see you in future seasons as well. Thanks yeah, a lot. Thank you. This video on first updates now is made possible by viewers like you, and also the following sponsors. Did you know that over 30% of the student population at Kettering University was in high school robotics? These same students have received a portion of over $7 million from robotic scholarships from Kettering University. See why so many in first choose to go to Kettering University at Kettering.edu. If you are a college student or recent graduate looking for an incredible internship, take a look at Stryker. Stryker provides a housing stipend, great pay, and an opportunity to work with state-of-the-art medical technology equipment. Discover why so many FIRST alumni are coming to Stryker for their internship or career at careers.stryker.com. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and ring the bell to stay up to date on our new videos. 
Keep the conversation going and provide your input to our content. Watch our live shows at twitch.tv forward slash first updates now. Join our Discord at discord.gg forward slash first updates now and check out Fun FTC on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter and First Updates Now on Facebook, Instagram, TikTok, and Twitter.